Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel. Kaushal this side and I hope you guys are doing well. Today we will be taking you through HTML form attributes. Forms play a vital role in every website. We need them for different purposes like for user login, sign up and for reviews as well. In this video tutorial, we will go through some form attributes which are present in HTML. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel already, Make sure to subscribe to our channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates on programming videos. So without any further delay, let's get started. We have been through forms in the previous videos wherein we discussed what forms are and why we need them. Apart from that, we have also worked on a small project where we designed a login and a sign up form using HTML and CSS. Now, you guys might be wondering. Why we are discussing this topic again? Is there any need to do so? There is no such need to discuss form attributes, but this video will help you differently. In this video, we will discuss form attributes in particular. So as we all know, HTML attributes refer to an element's additional properties or characteristics. For example, the style attribute we have been using for quite some time now is the best example one can give. It is used to style any tag, right? It is easy to use and we can use it with any tag of our choice. No matter what tag we are using, we can just use the style attribute to style that particular tag. That's it. But in this video, we will discuss some attributes used in the form tag in particular. The form tag is used to create a form in HTML. So let's use it first here without wasting any time. So what we'll do is we'll write here inside the body tag. We'll move to the body tag and we'll create a form tag over here. Now inside the form tag, we are going to use the label tag. So we'll discuss these tags or elements in the next video. So we'll write over here for. Now we'll write the value for this for. So let's say we are creating a. So let's say we are creating a text area or we can say a placeholder. So we'll write over here, let's say. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Fine. Now save the program. And here you can see we have written over here subscribe repeat. And here you can see we have subscribed to our YouTube channel present over here on the browser. Now we'll create an input box. So we'll write here input type is equals to let's say email. Now we'll write over here ID. So it is going to be let's say email fine id is again going to be email now we'll write over here name name is going to be let's say email one fine so this is going to be the name of our input box now we'll also mention placeholder over here so we'll write over here enter email fine now save this and here you can see we have a text box present on the browser which says enter email. Now the next thing we are going to do is we are going to create a submit button. So we will use the input tag again the type is going to be submit over here and we will write the name over here as or we can say the value as submit. Fine. Now save it and here you can see the submit button present over here on the browser. So here we have a form a basic form actually. Now. We have one text box present here along with the submit button, right? Now let's talk about the first form attribute. Now the first attribute is the action attribute. This attribute defines what will happen if we submit a form. So we can use this attribute to take the user to another web page. For example, let's say we have an HTML file present here and we want to redirect the user to that particular web page. So for that, we need to use the action attribute. So we'll write over here inside the form tag. So we'll write over here action. Now we are going to redirect the user to another web page. So we have this login.html present in a system already. Now this login.html is a form we created previously using HTML and CSS. If you guys are following this playlist from the beginning, then you must have got an idea about it. So save the program and move on to the browser now. We'll write over here. So let's write an email ID over here. So let's say we'll write over here Kaushal at the rate gmail.com. Fine. Click on submit, and here you can see we are being redirected to 
another web page. So this is our login form. You can learn to create such login forms using HTML and CSS. You will find the link in the cards mentioned below. So what's happening here is if the user subscribes to a newsletter, then it will be redirected to a login page to log in and enter the website. So here you can see it once again. So this is a text box. We'll write, let's say we are writing over here, caution, click on submit. And here you can see it's email type. So we have used the input type as email. So we have to mention at the rate and something after this as well. So let's say we are writing over here, yahoo.in. Now click on submit and the moment we click on submit button, we are being redirected to another login form. Fine. So this is the working of the action attribute in the form tag. Now the next attribute we are going to use is the target attribute. Fine. This attribute specifies where to display the response that is received once the user submits the form. In simple terms, it specifies if the response should be displayed in the same window or in a different window. Here in this particular example, we haven't specified this attribute as of now. So if we click on this submit button, you can see the user will be redirected to another HTML file in the same window. Fine. We'll use the target attribute to open this login page in a different window. So what we'll do is we'll write over here inside the form tag. We'll mention target and we'll write over here. Now save the program and we'll move back to a login page. Refresh it once. And here we have this caution at the rate yahoo.in present. So submit it and you can see another window here. The new web page is now opened in a different window. You can see it over here. We have two different windows present in our browser. So this is how the target attribute actually works. Another value we can use for the target attribute is self. So we can write over here self in place of blank. Now save the program and write something over here. Click on submit and you can see the login form in the same window. This value will open the new tab within the same window. It is also the default value. Fine. So apart from these two values, you can also use the parent and top values for this attribute. The parent value will display the response in the parent frame and the top will display it in full body of the window. You can also use the iframe name if you use one on your web page. So that's all for target attribute. Now let's move ahead and we'll now discuss the method attribute. The get and post method we have already discussed in the previous video. We know that the get method is used to send the data within the URL in the form of name value pairs. The length of the URL remains limited in this method. We have already discussed it in the previous videos. So let's use the method over here directly. So we'll write over here method as get for now. Fine. We'll move back to our HTML forms attribute window. Now we'll refresh it and we'll write over here. Let's see. Let's write something over here. Caution one, two, three. And click on the submit button. You can see the value over here in the URL. So if you see the URL, now let me increase the size. And here you can see it says caution one, two, three, person 40 gmail.com. So person 40 over here is the entity or we can say the care set for at the rate symbol. Fine. It's not recommended to use this method to send the data over the internet with the get method. For valuable information, we need to use the post method. We have to write here post in place of get. Fine. So we have to write here post, save it, move back to this window, refresh it, write over here something, click on submit and you can see it says this page isn't working as of now. In this method, the form data is transferred in the form of URL variables, which makes the data inaccessible to any outside. You can see here it's not working, but the data will be sent over the server in the form of an encoded message post transaction. This is not working because the server is not responding. As of now, we are not using any PHP or anything for server side scripting. So that's why this particular method is not working as of now. Now, another form attribute we are going to discuss is the autocomplete attribute. This attribute specifies whether a form should have autocomplete on or off. If the value is set to on, then the web browser will show options based on the user's previous inputs. Otherwise, if the value is set to off, 
then there will be no suggestions present to the user. So let's go through the example quickly. We'll use the get method over here instead of post. Now we'll write over here auto complete and we'll put auto complete to all. Fine. So here you can see the value of auto complete is on. Save the program and we'll write something over here. So you can see we have three suggestions present over here based on our previous inputs. So we have partial at the rate yahoo.in and similarly we have two more suggestions. We can use any of them and click on submit and you can see the login form over here. Now what we'll do is we'll change the value of autocomplete to off over here. Fine. Now save it. Move back to the browser. Click on the text box and try to write Kaushal over here. We know that this particular value we have used previously but there is no autocomplete on this time. That's why there are no suggestions present over here on the web browser. Autocomplete attribute is the easiest to use among all the other attributes we have discussed till now. The last attribute we are going to discuss is the no validate attribute. This is a boolean attribute. If it is present in the form tag, then the form data will not be validated on submission. Fine. For example, if we if we'll write here no validate after autocomplete. So this is also a form attribute. So you can see this is a boolean attribute. So we save the program and now we know that the input box we have used over here is of email type, right? It validates the user input. Now it will not validate the data because we have used the no validate attribute. So let's write something over here. Let's say we are writing a name only. There is no at the rate symbol present over here and nothing like an email in simple words we can say. Now click on the submit button and here you can see we are still able to go to the login form without validating a input. So if we remove this no validate attribute from here. Now we'll try to do the same, save the program and we'll write over here caution, click on submit and here you can see it says please include an at the rate in the email address. Now we'll do this task again, we'll put no validate over here, save it and we'll use caution once again, submit it and you can see it's working totally fine. So guys, these are some most important form attributes present in HTML. Many more attributes are present, but we are discussing the important ones in this video. So I hope you guys got it. So that's all for this video guys. See you in another session. If you enjoyed watching this video, then do give it a thumbs up. If you have any doubts, do let us know in the comments below. Please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Simply good. Thank you.